Hey, I'm Ron Drovers from KeyboardImprov.com, and let's bust another myth out of the water today. Let it go somewhere else, dissolve into the ether. Just don't bother us anymore, myth. Don't hold us back. Basically, um, we're going through some of these myths. We, we, we don't know. We hear people saying, do this, do this, do this. It's not real jazz if you don't do that. It's not rock and roll if you don't do that. Everybody does this. You're not going to learn if you don't do that. Well, a lot of these things are myths. Some of them are true. A lot of them are myths, though, because there's different paths and we can really um, find our own approach often. So if you um, uh, have a question, if like, you're not sure if something's a myth or if it's gonna help you, put it in the comment and I'll either address it with a, a reply or maybe make a video about it if I think it would help that way. Um, this is the fifth in our series. And this myth says that you have to play a song the way the original artist played it. And it's a complete myth. Um, it, it, you know, you hear me say that and you might be thinking, well, I don't think that's a myth. It doesn't. You know, it sounds pretty logical that I could play it any way I want. Well, in reality, we don't always feel that way. We feel like oh, I should be able to play it like this, and if I can't play it like that, I'm not even going to try. I see this all the time. Yesterday, I got a new student. Um, great guy. Loves music. Loves Bruce Springsteen. He's kind of at the sort of early intermediate level and can't quite play some of those fancy intros that. Uh, Springsteen's keyboardists play, uh, Roy Bitton, and um, on piano, and, and so he just doesn't try those songs. Whereas if you started with the chords, you know, we're starting to work through that. You can approach them like that. Um, and the artists themselves do this. You might hear a fancy arrangement on the recording with the whole band, but then let's say, um, like Bruce, you know, he's doing his, uh, his Broadway show, you know, or whatever, and he's, it's like unplugged, just him. And he'll, he'll play a simple version of these songs, either on the piano or on the guitar. Um, another thing you hear about, um, I used to teach at a, a school, local school, I used to teach a lot of teenagers piano, and um, I'd, I'd give a rock song to somebody and they'd say, oh, I can't play it on the piano because it's a guitar song, there's a guitar riff, like Rolling Stones, and you know, that's not true either, I can see why they think that, but um, Jumpin' Jack Flash by the Stones is one of the iconic rock guitar riffs by Keith Richards, right? Real rock guitar song, yet the pianist Leon Russell did a very a great and well-known cover of it in the early days of, um, of his career at the concert for Bangladesh, which was George Harrison's thing. Um, and it was mainly piano-based, and it was a guitar song, but it's a song. Do it any way you want, you know? So uh, th this concept that we have to do it the uh, way the artist did it uh, ends up holding us back a lot. And, and it held me back when I was about 15 or 16, so I want to prevent that from happening to you. So when I was 15 or 16, I was getting into Elton John heavily, still am, but I was getting into him, and I wanted to play your song, which has a pretty fancy accompaniment kind of thing, you know. You know, it's got the hand independence, you have to know these chords inside and out to play them in, in inversions and have some freedom. And I, I couldn't even, I could barely play the chords. And I think I sat down for about five minutes, tried it, and said, nope, not going to get this. So I didn't play the song again for like four or five years. You know, it was ridiculous. And so, um, so I was teaching this, this teenager at this, this local school. This, this would have been around uh, 2005. So times have changed since the 70s. You know, um, in the 70s, you couldn't just play the simple quarter note accompaniments that people play now. Do it once in a while on a Paul McCartney song or something, but you couldn't do, you know, that was, you know, remind me of Harry, Harry Styles, Sign of the Times, or Taylor Swift, you know, or, um, or Neil Young will sit down and play like that now, you know. Um, it, it sounds professional, it sounds state of the art, it's kind of a gift that the more recent generations have given us all. Maybe you're part of that generation, thank you. Uh, and now I'll start songs like that because it's a very pure, beautiful way to begin a song that gives us time, uh, a space to grow into the more fancy stuff, if we want, or we can just stay there, it sounds great. So I was telling this, this, this teenage student at the time that um, uh, let's play, you want to play your song, and I said, well, let's just do it simply. very approachable because once you learn the voicings you don't have to deal with all the, the um, sort of uh, hand chemistry there and independence so um, he said you know somebody's already done that uh, Ellie Golding and I said really I hadn't even heard of her at the time now I know she's a wonderful singer she had done it with eight notes See? it's very similar and since I've heard people like John Legend play it with the quarter notes 
and then because it's current now and it just sounds great. You know, John Legend can play more than that, but then after a while he started doing the more arpeggiated type thing, like I, I said, um, that I like to do too. So um, uh, the, the idea is you don't have to do it the exact way the original artist did it because that usually or often prevents us from learning it at all. So learning it in a way that's doable for you and then branch out from there. And you know, once you know the chords, once you know the tune, it's not just a stepping stone learning it like this because it sounds professional nowadays. It sounds really good. So you're playing at a very high level and it takes the pressure off. Like it, it's not like, you know, I have to hit that home run or nothing. I'm just like, get my eye on the ball and, you know, American baseball. If you're not in America, you know, American baseball. You just keep my eye on the ball, hit the ball, and sometimes it's going to be that home run. Uh, it's related to a concept that I came up with called MVP, Minimum Viable Piano. You start in a way that's minimum, but is viable. It still sounds really good, this quarter note accompaniment. You could do 10 songs, 50 songs, with just the quarter notes. So you really get that, and then branch out and have a lot of fun doing it. So um, don't let that concept that um, you have to, the myth that you have to play the song always the original way, the way the original artist did. Don't let that hold you back or stifle your creativity if you're hearing something else, a different approach, an individual approach. Bring out the best in you as a musician as you're learning all the other stuff. So uh, thanks for joining me here, We're exploding another myth. And as always, enjoy the journey and let the music flow.